So everybody seems to be talking about the attribution these days, um, but the, there's a problem like, what the heck even is the attribution problem and how do we solve it? And we in marketing tend to think that we like invented the world or invented the wheel or something, or, or we are looking at something very exciting and very interesting to solve. But as a matter of fact, the attribution problem was first uh, discovered by soccer coaches in the 1960s and actually solved it in the 1970s. And then in, now in the marketing, we just rediscovered the problem and we're trying to solve the same problem that has actually been solved 50 years ago. So what the heck is the attribution problem and uh, why is it even relevant to football coaches? So you probably know this guy very famous soccer coach, um, and he has the same attribution problem um, because he was heard once that his favorite player is Ronaldo, right? Um, and th and it, it is like that with most of fans and coaches that they always tend to like strikers. They always tend to like the players that scores the goals, right? Uh, but in the football team, there is not just the striker. There's actually 11 player, players there. And now the attribution problem, or, or, or what the coach faces is, I, even if I like the striker the most, I can't get all the money to the striker, because then all the other guys, all the other players would be pissed, and you know they would leave the team. So I have to figure out a way how to fairly uh, divide the credit or the money uh, among the players. So I have to first know uh, what's their contribution to the game or, or to our uh, scores. All right, so yeah, usually strikers tend to, tend to get most of, of the credit and most of the money, but uh, that's not, 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 uh, not a good approach. And I kid you not, this, this really is an issue in soccer. And there, there are scholarly articles where you can find uh, discussions about attribution problems, just like we do in marketing. So let's have a look at it. So the problem they face in, uh, in soccer is that usually this guy strikes a goal, right? But he couldn't strike a goal if, if he didn't get a pass from this guy, and, and so forth and so forth. So everybody somehow is a part of of the thing, a part of that a goal was scored. Uh, but like, who, who did a better job? Who's the most important here? Is it the striker? Is it the goalie? Who knows, right? And maybe you think I'm crazy, I'm talking about soccer here, but you can very easily uh, take that and put it into your context, into marketing, right? So. Here, we're looking at, at players. So a player number one passes the ball and nothing happens. Player number two passes the ball to the other player and nothing happens. And player three passes the ball to player number four and nothing happens. And then finally, uh, this guy number four scores the goal. It's the same, it's the same with customer acquisition online. So maybe uh, the customer starts with seeing an ad that was served via ad form or some other platform like that. And the customer goes to your website, he doesn't convert, so nothing happens. Later on, he sees an ad on Facebook. Again, he goes to your website, he doesn't convert, so nothing happened. And then he sees the ad on AppNexus, and maybe at the end, like three months later, he searches on, on Google, uh, he clicks on an AdWords ad, and he finally converts, and then the goal is scored. But again, who should get most credit? Is it, is it AdWords? Or is it all you guys? So let's have a look of how traditionally this problem was solved or approached, or how could you approach it using the normal tools that you normally have. And let's say most of the clients in Czech Republic would have Google Analytics free version. And what you can do and what you can see in Google Analytics free version are these attribution models. Last click, first click, linear, time decay, position based. So let's look at some numbers. And I, I, I promise I'm not gonna go more complicated than this on the math today. So 
here he, we see an example of uh, an attribution path that a customer clicked on on a uh, platform num called A, and then a platform called B, and then a platform called X, and then finally converted. And out of 100 customers that went through this path, 10 of them converted. So you would say the conversion ratio was 10%. Uh, an attribution we rather like to call it the probability of conversion. It doesn't matter. It's just 10%, all the same. But uh, who gets the credit? So if you have a coach uh, that I would call a last touch coach, he would look at uh, what was at the end of the conversion path, and he would see that it was the channel that we called X. So all the credit would go, sorry, it should be 10% here. So all the credit should go to, uh, to X, right? And A and B are not important here. Everything goes to X. Well, then you can have a coach that I would call a first, first touch coach. And this guy is probably nuts because like, nobody in soccer is going to say like, the goalie is responsible for all the goals, right? Uh, so you're not probably meet many of these coaches, but theoretically, there could be a coach that says, the first player is really important, and he deserves all the credit, right? And then there could be a coach that says, I love them all. They're all my boys. I love them all. And he's an egalitarian coach. So he, he says, you know, there were three guys in the path, so everybody deserves a third. Everybody deserves the same. So he, he's an egalitarian coach. Uh, but the results, as you can see, differ uh, a lot. So the question is, why does it matter? Why does it matter what type of coach uh, you are? So here are some data, and this is real data from one of our clients. And uh, what we did here is that we compared what the different attribution models told about the performance of this specific channel. It was ad form in this, in this case, but it's not that important. So if you look here, uh, the last click solution says that ad form is responsible for fair percentages of all of their conversions, sort of. Well, if you look at the first touch attribution model, it says, no, 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 I think they're responsible for seven percentage as, uh, in my overall conversions. And that, my friends, is why it oh, you can't see it, but it's a 75 percentage difference. So how do you evaluate the performance of your marketing and of, of the specific channels if one attribution model tells you something and the other tells you something that's 75% difference? In other words, if one tells you it brought you 10 million euros in revenue, the other would tell you, no, it brought you 17.5 million euros in revenue. How do you make sense out of that? So, enters Shapley value, and uh, this is how they solved it in soccer 50 years ago. And it's the same thing we use uh, today with data-driven attribution models. And uh, there's probably no point into, into going into, uh, into this map here, uh, so I'll explain it on, on a different example. Shapley value is something like going to the parties. Imagine you're, you're going to the party, you like going to the parties, and you like to go with a specific friend of yours. Maybe her. And uh, every time you go to the party with this specific friend, it turns to be a blast. Like you have a lot of fun, it's, it's a great night, and it's just, it's just great. Uh, and then once, she gets sick and she, couldn't, she can go. So you go without her, and the party just sucks, right? The party sucks, you're not, you're not, you're not having fun, uh, and when you leave the party, you start to think that probably your friend is the, the most important part that makes the, all the parties fun, right? But if you go only to 10 parties per year, you can't really say statistically that that's the case. It's just your hunch. Um, but imagine that you went to 10,000 parties last year, 
And at the end of each party, you wrote a score from one to 10, let's say, of how good the party was. And there was all possible combinations of all your friends imaginable. And if that is the case, then you can very easily calculate what the contribution of each friend to the greatness of the party is, right? So that's how Shapley Valley works. We don't need to do the math here, but that's how it works, basically. So on a very simple example, uh, I'll explain how the Shapley Valley works. Uh, we want to evaluate what channel X brought to the table. So we have a situation one where we had 100 customers that went through A, B, two conversion, and 10 of them converted, probability of 10 percentage. Right? It's the same we, we've seen before. Now, we want to see what's the contribution of channel X if I start to invest in some new channel, if I open up a new channel, if I put more money into market marketing, how is it going to change? So in this case, uh, 50 people went through this path, uh, six people converted, so the probability is 12%, right? So the Shapley value would tell you that the contribution of channel X is the difference between 12 and 10, and it's actually two percentage points. Or in other words, the uplift is 25%, from 10% to 12, if that makes sense. Uh, and that's, that's the result. So channel X is contributing, is improving uh, your campaigns by 25 percentage. But if you look at it uh, via the lens of the traditional attribution models you have at your hand in Google Analytics 3 version, let's see what would happen. If you, if you use the last click attribution, you would say 100 percent goes to X. If you use the first click, then you would say X didn't bring anything. It doesn't deserve anything. If you use the linear model, uh, you would say X brought 33%, but it actually brought only 25. So that's why you need something precise, something uh, like Shapley value to calculate the real contribution of the channel. Okay, let's have a look at a different example. What changed here is only that the number of conversions here went down from six to five. So now, actually, uh, channel X is bringing zero, zero improvement to the table, right? Because if you only use this path with A and B, you will get 10%. You added channel X and didn't change anything. The probability is still 10%. And it can get even worse. Let's imagine that you added channel X and it actually lowered the probability of conversions, right? So now the channel <laughs> is like making your campaigns worse, but you can still think, if you use the last click, you could still think he's making all, all the money. He's making 100% of, of our money, uh, but he's actually losing you money all the time. So that's why it's important uh, to look at the attribution models. No, now, when you understand this, you probably would want to start use attribution models, of course, um, as Alex here. Um, but there's, al there's always a but, right? Uh, so there are three buts. Uh, oh, okay. Uh, here's just a summary of uh, what Shapley value would tell you. So it's the same example we saw before. Uh, last click tells you something. First click tells you rather something different. And then the truth is somewhere in the middle uh, that's calculated by the Shapley value. And if, if you pair this with uh, having an information not only about the contribution of each channel, so not only about the contribution of each player, but also about how much do you pay the player on salaries, so how much do you invest in that specific channel, you can again, uh, then get to ROIs, and then you can compare the, the performance of each channels uh, one to next to the, to the other. So you can, you can maybe see that here, 
the blue channel uh, brings you six crowns for every one crown that you put into the marketing. You get six crowns back. Uh, and then, then this, yellow, this green channel uh, only brings you half a crown for each crown that you bring uh, that you put into your marketing. So and th that's not very good. And this is actually the end result of all the calculations, that you are finally able to see how much is every channel uh, making you, which couldn't be done before. This is like a big step. Uh, but there's always some buts. So before you can dive into the attributions, you have to solve a few problems. Um, they're just free uh, to, to start with. Uh, problem number one is sampling, and it's, it's actually kind of related to problem number two, that's storage. Uh, in Google Analytics free version, and I'm, I'm not like picking on them, and we, we love the platform, it, it's, it's great, you know. Uh, everybody uses it, and it's for free, so I'm, I'm not saying it's bad, but if you have the free version and if you run more than 50,000 uh, visits per day, sessions per day, uh, then they don't store anymore. So you, you're losing the data uh, and you, you cannot run the, uh, the calculations based on that. So, so if you have more than 50,000 sessions per day, you probably have to switch or find uh, some other solution. And then the other problem, problem number three, is last click non-direct. And probably some of you have heard about this. And probably some of you are familiar with this problem. Uh, but for, the, for those of you who are not, the problem is, by default, in Google Analytics, we all know that we are looking at last click model. But actually, the default setting is such that uh, if the second last uh, channel was non-direct, then it gets the credit. So let's say you clicked on an AdWords ad in the past 30 days, you didn't convert, then you went directly to the web website by typing the URL, and you convert it, and by the default settings of Google Analytics, the credit goes to the, the second last channel to the AdWords ad, not to the uh, direct uh, path. So then you're not really looking at last click data anyway. You're looking at some kind of weird last click non-direct data. And what we do as a first thing with our clients when we implement your revenue is that we turn this off we turn this default settings off, and we change it to uh, real, real last click, so we can get uh, better data out of it. So that's about all. Rondo is the best anyway, as Alex would say. <laughs>